Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here is what's coming up on this Thursday, October 17th edition. Tonight, new Chase regulations are a war on cash and a war on small business. But Chase says, don't worry. Restrictions on you are to lower their risk, like Cyprus, remember? And TSA documents reveal that they know airport procedures are contrived security theater. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Yesterday, InfoWars broke the story that Chase Bank would be imposing capital controls on its small business owners. Well, Chase Bank responded to that story after it went viral yesterday by saying that concerns over the capital controls were an overreaction. While admitting that it is imposing limits on cash transactions and banning international wire transfers for business customers, Chase Bank claims the measures do not represent capital controls and instead are merely about streamlining and de-risking. The bank also says that it is removing the ability to send the international wires because there is no oversight in the form of a bank representative managing them. Because, you know, you're most likely sending money to terrorists every time you take your money out of the bank, so you must be monitored. Now note that Chase isn't concerned about the risk of international money being wired into their bank. They're only concerned about you sending your money internationally. Paul Watson broke this story on Infowars.com and he points out that in saying that international wire transfers are too much of a risk, Chase Bank might as well be bankrupt because it is telling you there is no money to withdraw. This is where the mega banks have wanted to take us all along, a total cashless society that destroys all privacy and allows them to fine and fee the general population into serfdom. But if you're like me, you're thinking, I'm not a small business owner. I don't have $50,000 in cash transactions that I'm making every month. This is not a problem for me. But it is a problem. It's directly a problem to small businesses and people just like you and me, even though we don't have a lot of money. If we go to the grocery store or a restaurant, in order for those places to avoid paying the fees that are going to come along with large cash deposits, they're just going to stop accepting cash altogether, which means a cashless society, all of our money would be digital in the banks, which means when we see the pending economic crash that's going to happen, we're not going to be able to take our money out of the banks. And it's actually just the perfect setup for the bail-ins, which is what we saw in Cyprus. But according to Chase, everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about. Their response was that, these changes were being implemented to better serve our customers. They did not explain, however, how blocking all international wire transfers would better serve their customers. The new restrictions are particularly ironic because J.P. Morgan Chase is a primary shareholder and thus owner of the Federal Reserve, which has been responsible for sending trillions of freshly printed dollars outside of the country over the last several years. There is absolutely no legitimate reason for why one of the world's biggest banks just restricted the outward flow of cash from domestic businesses to their international contacts, unless of course you stop to consider that the United States is and has been on the brink of collapse for nearly a decade. Capital control is an economic strategy designed to limit the transfer of money. It is a strategy implemented only during times of economic or financial stress and it is usually a precursor to wealth seizure by the state. But you say, it can't happen here. Well, you know what? It can and it will. In fact, Cypress-style wealth confiscation is now starting to happen all around the globe. Poland said in September it will transfer to the state many of the assets held by private pension funds, which may be unconstitutional because the government is taking private assets away from them without offering any compensation. EU finance ministers approved a plan in June for dealing with future bank bailouts. They're forcing bondholders and shareholders to take the hit for bank rescues ahead of the taxpayers. A bail-in is now being organized for the oldest bank in Italy, and the solution to bank failure in New Zealand will see small depositors lose some of their savings to fund big bank bailouts. Even Canada's Economic Action Plan for 2013 proposes to implement a bail-in regime 
for systemically important banks. So what does this mean for us? Well, what it means is that governments of the world, not just governments here in America, are eyeing our money as part of the solution for any future failures of major banks. But you might be saying, oh, what's the big deal? We bailed out those banks that were too big to fail in 2008 with all that TARP money, and I didn't really feel it. Well, that's because we bailed them out with taxpayer dollars. The bailout is the banksters robbing us collectively and mostly deferred. They just add it to the national debt. But a bail-in is when the banksters are robbing us individually and immediately. They're going directly into our banking account, into our savings account, pensioners. If you're a shareholder, they're going to go after any investments you might have. So when we see things like uh, the banking industry requiring that all regulatory capital instruments include a mechanism in their terms and conditions that ensures they will take a loss at the point of non-viability, i.e., if they're losing money, they'll take yours. Why do you think they pay you 0.000001% for storing your money at the bank? It's not because they're storing, you're storing the money at their bank and they're holding it for you. No, it's because they see that money as a loan and you are just an unsecured creditor, which if they default, guess who's not going to get paid? Well, coming up, we'll hear what Obama has to say about the new normal. And then we have some new breaking here at Infowars.com information about the TSA. So stay with us. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today.